Okay, we're going to start weathering now. This is all clear coated and decalled, as you saw, nicely all done. Um, and I'm going to use flory washes, but I'm not going to paint it on, I'm going to spray it with an airbrush, do a light coat of dust underneath. Then we can come back in afterwards with Flory's thicker wash, we can do mud splatter and all that kind of thing. Then we can add grime and dust effects and all the other bits and bobs to go with it. So I've loaded up the airbrush. This time I'm using a finger binger. Pretty cool airbrush, it's a cheap airbrush and it's basically uh, ideal for getting started. So basically we're just going to load up like it is at like a paint product, it's already thinned and ready to use straight out the bottle and basically we're just going to lightly spray everywhere so it's all dust dirty Also, I can do the same stuff with the wheels. Okay, now we've done a light dusting of dirt. You could pretty much leave it like that if you want to, but we want some extra splatters and stuff. So we can use the Flory Thick Wash now. Get an old toothbrush and just flick it on so give this a good old shake load up your brush it's going to be a little bit messy um, And the random, randomness of the splatters is going to make it pretty cool. It's going to be wet and horrible, but bear in mind this will dry, dry back. Because it is a water soluble paint so like this big splatter here I don't actually like that so I'm going to reduce it slightly okay next we'll be using rust wash over the exhaust parts We can highlight some of the areas and the bolts. Actually, I'm going to give the whole thing a wash. Top part of the uh, smoke deposits and stuff. Right, 
once this is dry we can see what it looks like if need be we can add more rust pigments and stuff I just don't want it completely dead rusty I want it tarnished but worn down effect so so I've gone ahead and added a little bit of rust pigment now onto it and it's starting to dry and it's starting to have a different effect again once it's dry completely we see where we stand okay one of the other steps we can do is use Tamiya panel line wash I like to use this for stains and stuff and I've gone ahead and already done the grills in the uh, brassy colour but I don't have um, brass so I've used gold and then I'll use the Tamiya panel line to darken it up because it's going to be oily so this side is fresh so it's basically just completely covering the whole whole section let it flow and do its thing all over the radiator all over these bolts inside here at the back if you get too much on the bodywork just give it a little bit of a wipe quickly so we get some of this done over those bolts you can also use it for nuts and bolts I'm going to use it on the leaf springs or you can use it on other joints so we can do some of these bolts some of these engine parts all underneath here if you wish to do so so that, I, I don't know we do the spring for instance you could not do so inside this brakes but again it's all going to be covered up that so it's not I wouldn't worry about that too much let's put a little bit around this spring kind of stains is, is this going to darken up areas you could possibly do the grills if you like um, you could even use it on the exhaust if you wanted to um, which I have done up here so this is starting to dry now so it's starting to have that rusty effect okay folks I've gone ahead and attached certain parts of the tractor now we've done the wheels we've attached the exhaust because that's all dry now and it's looking pretty good our next step is just to do some metal chips and stuff we're going to use Tamir's come on focus FX656 uh, metal grey as always get your sponge this is from Edward's um, packaging so a bit of sponge a bit of the uh, paint on a paper towel take off the excess as always bare minimum left and it basically everywhere is going to be wear left on the tractor so a big chunk of it's going to be on the seat itself it's going to take a quite a bit of a beat in and then you catch it in the light we can do the back the chair across the top of these fenders some of the levers around the hood around these parts just literally everywhere it's quite tricky to get grab hold of this now because there's not much left of what where I can grab Just subtle metal effects there. You could possibly do some on the wheels. A 
if you wish to do so. Try not to get it over the tyre. Also, we've done the radiators. So we're going to go ahead and just do some subtle chipping everywhere. And then it's pretty much add the steering wheel uh, and had uh, add the headlights to the front and I'm going to call it good. Howdy folks my friends. Uh, the tractor is all complete now. It's done. It's a beautiful kit. It goes together nicely. I highly recommend it. There's a couple of issues in the instructions. I've tried to explain that in the build video. Um, there's a couple of steps that they ask you to do in instructions. If you try and do it that way, some parts don't fit because they get in the way, especially on the underside detail. There's a pin that goes in the front that allows the uh, steering and suspension arms to pivot. This tr triangle spray base, they're saying put it in first and then the pin slots in. It's quite tricky. It can go, but it requires a little bit of flexing and you could end up breaking it. I haven't done a ton of weathering on the bottom, as you can see. Um, at the end of the day, you're not going to really see it unless you pick it up. Um, this, all these detailed parts underneath are very fragile, so just take your time. I don't recommend this for a beginner at all. Um, once you've got a couple of kits behind you, you can tackle this. I think you have no problems, but it's a good good kit. Um, they do several other tractors in the 124 scale range and they have slight differences. One with a cab, one with the metal wheels is for um, different type of ground because um, tyres can tend to, get, tend to get bogged down and stuff in mud and they have these metal weird tyres, uh, wheels even, which are pretty cool. They do a dual wheel combo. Um, yeah, uh, as I say, I paint it in a bluish grey colour with the red wheels. I've used Floy washes for the mud effects. It's a new product that they've released. I wanted to try it out. I think the mud effects have come out pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, it's a simple way of doing mud, and you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, you can go extra steps in this kit by adding wiring and stuff, and stuff like that. Um, I didn't do that because um, you don't really see it that much um, as I say it's just a great kit overall I do like the way they did the wheels in multiple steps it gives you that nice tread pattern that was nicely thought out um, as I say the kit was clean it had no flash um, but yes yeah, so just check it out buy one yourself I wish they would make more agricultural vehicles in, in general. Um, 124 scale is a nice scale to work with. They do these type of tractors in 135 scale. That's going to be quite tricky, I was imagine, in that smaller scale. I, I thought this was a little bit tricky. Being smaller, it's going to be quite more tricky. It's probably more simplified. Um, but I don't know. As I say, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time, guys. Mm -hmm.